to my channel and if you're new, hello, I'm Destiny Taylor. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to turn on your notifications. As you guys can see from the title and this view, I have another hair first. Your girl did some box braids. Now, this is not the first time I've ever had box braids. I did jumbo box braids about three years ago when I was a sophomore or freshman in college, but I'm calling this a hair first because this is the first time I've had smaller ones and the first time I've done them crochet style. Now, this video is going to be formatted differently than all my other hair first and hair tutorials just because crochet braids have really boomed and there are so many great tutorials out there that can show you guys how to achieve this style on your own at home. So instead of doing that, um, I am going to do a mini tutorial. I left two braids open so I can show you guys um, but I just wanted to share some tips and things that I learned along the way while installing my braids that will definitely help you guys that I didn't see and other bloggers video so without further ado let's just get into this let's talk about the actual hair that I installed of course it's by Janet collection I did collaborate with them once again on this video so the box braids that I have in right now are actually new to their Havana collection um, these are the 3s 3 strand Havana poetic justice box braids and they are 24 inches now the color that you're seeing right here it's in the majority of my head is M1B30 and I do have a few strands like this one right here that's M1B27 and that's actually the color that's right here in the pack. I did get these two colors just because I thought they would blend well. I plan to do the M1B30 all around and I thought it would mainly be 1B but it turned out to look mainly brown like a like a step up from a 4 as you guys can see and I thought the 27 would you know pretty much have the same mixture mainly 1B but then have a tad bit of highlight of 27 but when I opened the package again the M1B 30 ended up being brown and the um, M1B 27 ended up being like how I thought it would look mainly 1B with some highlights um, but this color isn't as warm as I thought it would be so the 30 is very warm and this 27 is very cool and it's just giving me some funky vibes so I only have a few of them in there I wanted to take these out but of course I ran out of hair. I have 10 packs installed in my hair right now. You guys know that I always, I go full or I go home. I love very full crochet braids, very full hair period. So I did use 10 packs. You can get away with using, I would say six to seven packs minimum. What I did basically was let me show you guys. I have my entire front single crocheted, as you can see right here. And all that means is I braided my natural hair like this as an individual braid. And then I attached the crocheted um, box braid to the root of the braid. And then in the back, I have regular traditional crochet braids. I almost got carried away. I almost went into technique. Let me talk a little bit more about this hair. Something that I did notice about this hair that I wasn't too happy about was that the ends are different. So you can see this one on the M1B27, the ends are very loose. I don't like that. And then on the M1B30, the ends are actually like twisted in a two strand twist. So they're very, you know, uniform and they're very neat. And then all of the 1B 27s are just very frayed at the end. So you can see how much more put together, um, how clean this looks versus this. And also these, these braids right here are they're tinier and they're tighter. The braid is actually tinier and tighter than the M1B27. I'm not sure why that is <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I was about to say maybe I got a bad batch, but literally every single packet that I got of the M1B27 was like that. Like this one, you can see is like that. I mean, it would be cute if it was all over, but the mixture just wasn't cutting it. What I also like about this line is they have these really cool ombre colors. So they have like a teal and a deep blue. They had um, a black going into a gray, going into a silver, and this really cute purple going into pink. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish um, that Janet 
collection would have had a nice 1B going into a 4 going into a 30. You know a nice natural brown ombre because that would have totally rocked that. Even if it was like 1B to brown to blonde at the end, I would have definitely rocked that just because that's more of my speed at the moment. But yeah, they didn't have it. Like what's up with the natural ombres? I like these colors but I'm really for the natural ombres. Janet Collection is a wholesale vendor pretty much, so if you want to get your hands on this hair, you have to go to your local beauty supply store or go to a website like Elevate Styles or Sally Beauties. Those are the two websites that I absolutely recommend and try to find this hair. Again, this is the Janet Collection 3S 3 Strand Havana Box pole wedding just as braid style. Um, I have the color M1B30, a few M1B27, and this hair is Kinecolon, so it's not silky, if you guys are wondering. <laughs> okay, so let me just go ahead and attach a braid. So we're about to work the magic. So I have my crochet braid, and I have my real braid right here. What I'm doing is looping this at the root of that braid. And then I'm just gonna go about my merry business. Hope you guys can see that. And continue to wrap the crochet braid around the hook, the latch, close the hook, and pull it through. As you can see, that's a thick braid that has to go through that little root. I hope you guys can see. So again, don't make it too tight. And then from there, I'm just gonna pull the end of the braid through that hook and then proceed to pull. So, as you can see, I have it attached. So that's the easy part. Now the part that will have you doing the style forever in a day. So if you have medium to long length hair, this is gonna take a long time. Like my hair in the front, I had to do it all the way to like down here and that takes a while, so. What you basically do is first you push this through. When you're doing your first loop, you want to do it toward the um, the base of the crochet as much as possible so you don't see the braid. So once you have that, you can just pull the hair through that circle there. You see I have a hair. Then you're going to just pull it through like that. Now what you're going to do is keep feeding that throughout this braid and what's cool about this is it's flexible so you just you can wire this through the entire braid. So I'm going to start from here and just slide this on up through the braid and then I'm going to pull it through. And from there, I'm gonna put the hair right back into the loop. Now my hair is thin, so I'm just pulling the hair anywhere, but it's best to do the ends when you're doing this, pull the ends through the loop, just because if you have a thick braid, it's hard to like pull it down because basically the hair, your hair doubles when you pull it down, if you get what I'm saying, it forms a V and that V has to go down the braid. So if you have like two thick ends of a braid, it's like hard to get in. So I do the very end because when it makes that V, it's thin, if that makes sense. And you always want to stay on the side where the hair comes out. So like here, the hair ended on the back. So I'm not gonna start by looping it to the front. I'm gonna start by looping it through the back and I'm gonna make sure the end goes through the back. Okay, so do to do, do, just pulling it through. Just gonna pull it through some more. Oops. So pull it through. Once you got it through, pull it down. <laughs> And there you go. That's how you do it. That's what I did. I did that 
all through the front of my hair. Now I'm going into a technique. Um, I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly because my camera is dying. Let me get this hair out of my face real quick. Ugh, that's ugly. It can't be ugly. I'm gonna just leave it because I don't, I don't know, I'm making my head look weird. So, anyone who says DIY crochet box braids in less than one hour is lying. They're lying out of their teeth because this style takes a very long time. First you have to wash your hair and then you have to braid it. If you are not a fast braider, that will take you at least an hour 30. For me, it took me about 30 to 45 minutes because I'm a fast braider. It also depends on how much hair you leave out. So if you see anyone with like the singles in their hair all over or like half and half like I did, then it did not take an hour. It did not even take two or four hours. This this style took me eight hours. I started at 10 p.m. and then I did not finish until 6 a.m. and I still had a few um, things to do in the middle. Like this style takes a very long time. You know, I wasn't even keeping track of time because I, I was like, you know what, I do my hair all the time, crochet braids, like I can do crochet braids in an hour, two hours, three and max. It never takes me this long. And when I looked at the clock, I was like, damn. And when I was paying attention to what I was actually doing, I was like, it would actually be much, much quicker if I would have just unraveled the braids and regularly braided them into my hair versus doing the crochet style. Cause like doing the crochet style, it's honestly only worth it if you're doing like two rows, if you have jumbo sized crochet braids to put in, or if you just can't braid. If you can't braid at all, then like this is your go-to. Other than that, do not do it because this takes a long time. I don't think I'm ever gonna do this style again. Maybe if I do two rows or if I get some really fat crochet braids, but I'm good off of this. I'm good off of it. But one thing I can say is this looks gorgeous. These are like the best set of crochet braids that I've ever done. Um, this side is kind of wonky. This one is really loose. This side is kind of wonky just because it was the side that I started with, but I instantly got the hang of it. It took me a while to figure out what worked for me. These look awesome, like I just did regular box braids. I think I've had it in for exactly a week today, and I've been sleeping without a scarf. I've been in Jamaica jumping off of cliffs and waterfalls into 20 feet water, and this is how it looks just some things that I realized so when you're braiding your hair your real hair in individuals um, you don't want to do your braid too tight because when it goes to sticking that latch into the root and actually attaching this crochet braid it will pull the ish out of your hair so if you want edges or if you love hair on your scalp make sure you don't braid your hair too tight at the root because your edges will be done your your hair will be done because you're basically pulling your hair from your scalp is what you're doing and it's going to it's just going to keep on pulling you know that's something that i realized while watching other people's videos i was like wait that's way too tight and i know this girl's edges is gonna fall out or she's gonna have a really tough time later <laughs> another thing that i noticed when you're actually weaving your hair into the crochet braid, which I'm gonna show you how to do in a second. Don't use this. Don't use a regular latch hook. Definitely not this thick one. Um, I wouldn't even go for the small one. If you're doing someone else's hair, maybe you can do it. But instead, I would get a beater, or in this case, this is a crochet needle or tool that was actually bundled into a few packs of my um, crochet braids. So that's something else that's cool about this hair. You get um, your own latch hook. I didn't use this to attach the hair to my braid just because it's, it's very flimsy and I like to go fast so this was better, but once it came to weaving my hair into the braid, I used this. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this quick, this was a tip tutorial. I gave you tips in a mini tutorial, this tip tutorial. And if you enjoyed it, thumbs it up, leave a comment down below and tell me you enjoyed it. And what do you think of the format of these tip tutorials versus the long form of like my regular tutorials? Cause I can, I can do my regular tutorials, but I can also do my tip tutorials. And yeah, peace and love guys. Thank you so much for tuning in.